<clears throat> okay, so I'm going to start off with some announcements, really, really important announcements for this month. So as you guys know already, there is a sale October 1st, um, which is not that far away. Um, and if you can wait, if you don't want to wait to buy Portrait Studio, you can always use the Save 10 on checkout through my website. But if you are having trouble with uh, buying Portrait Studio, your the price is a little bit steep for you. Um, uh, I feel like we've priced it fairly, but I do understand definitely for those who can't afford it, or um, uh, and it's just not a resource that is a luxury at the moment. Is, is a luxury at the moment. I have set it up so that I have a fair amount of time wherein I offer the sale for uh, the offer of Portrait Studio for a sale price of almost fifty percent off. So that's my way of providing a window for those who can't afford it, but at the same time keeping it fair throughout the rest of the year. I usually have sales like this only twice a year. Uh, so for those who have a Portrait Studio copy, um, uh, thank you so much for, for getting it on the off sale hours. Thank you for those who took advantage of the 10% off. Thank you so much. But uh, for those who are having issues, just hold out for a little bit longer, um, just really two weeks, honestly. Um, and uh, I will be extending the deadline for the community challenge into October. So we won't have a creepy creature challenge or I'll, I will offer the creepy creature challenge alongside the character design challenge. Um, I think that might be fun. Uh, so for the uh, last Thursday, we will do a creepy creature or the, the last Thursday, which is the 25th of October, will be the deadline for the character design environment integration challenge which is the pole vaulting in a rocky environment, a character pole vaulting across a rocky environment. You get to choose the culture, you get to choose the concept art, but you have to hand in a mood board so that we can see where you're coming from. And then on Tuesday the 30th, uh, before uh, Halloween, I will probably do the creepy creature design uh, deadline. So you can start on your creepy creature design now. Creepy creature design really is just designing a creepiest creature you can design in its habitat. You want to design a weird set of eyes staring through a swamp with aerial perspective on a tree? Do it. You want to design a character slithering, slithering through dried up moss lands or something like marshlands or whatever the term is? Um, and uh, you can do it. You can do a creepy uh, failed science experiment like the, um, uh, the, the Demigorgon from Stranger Things, something like that. Uh, you just have to remember that there there are environments they come from that this time it's not just a sketch concept but it is a full illustration a full thing uh so um that's out there two really big challenges for those who need inspiration and then there are for those who are want to be part of, of the apprenticeship on my channel we have a character design challenge currently running for the apprentices through discord um, so I have like three ways that you guys can be challenged right now for concept work, portfolio work, stuff that's publishable. You can't complain, <laughs> okay? I know I've been a little distracted with my life problems and my back problems, but this time I told you guys, you guys are going to have a ton of stuff to do around the fall. The fall is going to be nuts though. It's going to be crazy and just take a look. You've got um, two sales, you've got three challenges and more stuff upcoming. Hopefully. <laughs> I don't know what else would be upcoming, God forbid. Um, so for those who want to join on Patreon, go to isterbeck.com and click here to support uh, on Patreon. But if you want all of the uh, new brushes that I made, all of that stuff, it's all available here at For the Apprentices on Patreon. Um, so you may join there. There's no more deadline because now Patreon has uh, offered me the pay as you go or the pay as pay up front feature so I don't have to worry about people popping into Patreon and stealing content and running away uh, with, a, with a refund. It was really weird uh, for a while there. That happened throughout the entire time I ever had Patreon up, so it was really weird and very gross when I found out. Um, so I'm starting to tell weird stories like an old person. Let's get started. So Abu put together for me a reference because I just reformatted my computer so that my Photoshop can finally work properly. Everything seems to be working smoothly. I'm not sure if it's going to fall apart again, but if it does, all of my files are in a drive and I'll just reformat again. So um, that's why I don't have Portrait Studio copy on me right now. So I will put one together for us so we can have a look at what is going on with this piece. I know today was about figures, but not enough people handed in any work and people didn't hand in work last Thursday either. 
Um, so uh, now I'm just going to focus on some lighting and some studio stuff um, just so that we can stay at least close to some kind of universal theme that we can cover together. Uh, so next time I assign you guys a bunch of stuff, I would love to see more of you hand in the homework. This is a community. Four people handed in. I think it was like five or four people who handed in gesture studies um, or anatomy studies. So I, 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 it is so difficult for me to to make it to these classes now because of my health issues. I'm being just as clear as possible. And when I show up and I did a call to complete some homework or I'm hosting these two big challenges now, um, the creepy creature design, ch character, cr creature design challenge and the character design challenge with the environment, um, I expect you guys to show up on those days. I, I run these as live streams because it's, it's more active this way. It's more um, better communication this way with you guys. Uh, so if you can't make it, that's fine. But for those who can, I really appreciate when you guys challenge yourselves, take advantage of the lesson, uh, build your portfolios, get the ball started on teaching yourself better, um, uh, painting uh, threshold and patience. Uh, so uh, yeah, just remember that I, I, I do appreciate when you guys show up to the live streams and when you attend um, any themes or any homework that I assign you guys or any contests or anything like that. This is all about you guys. This is the one factor of my entire channel that's dedicated to you guys and you guys specifically. Um, I think that the, the majority of this channel is about the public classes, comes and stems from the public classes. Uh, so try to, uh, try to attend when you can and, and uh, participate. Participation. This is a call for participation. Okay. So let's get started. So my biggest problem with this piece is that the perspective that you have on the eyes is completely off. Um, she's also looking away. It's a tile canvas. Uh, it's, it's hard to really want to continue looking at this. Um, so because it, it just seems like you're not accommodating what the eyes want to see in a character layout splash like this. So one of the biggest problems starting out was the canvas size. It felt a little cramped. It felt a little bit um, like uh, just constricted. It's a very dark painting as well. So I'm just going to round off some of these areas. So I'm not sure if this is a Jedi. Am I looking at a Jedi? Right, I'm just uh, finishing up the illustration as much as possible. All right, so a nice um, open illustration space. Even if you're like, hey, I'm not even rendering this far side. Why do I have to include it? You include it because it's very important to give the painting some breathing room. And the breathing room, even though those spaces aren't going to be rendered, they're insignificant, they still play a massive role in the placement of the focal point on the positive space. So there needs to be a bit more up here. I, did up, uh, I didn't back up my workspace on Photoshop, so that's why you're seeing all these extra settings that I don't usually use. I'm also been extremely busy booking my October semester for students. All this kind of like orientation. I can't do public orientations for classes. I have to do personal orientations for every single student that books. So it gets very repetitive and memorizing new names. And it's just, you know, the teacher life. And uh, it's very, very tricky. All right, so now that we set up the, 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 the entire um, composition, to be a little bit more friendly, what I would do is just reposition her so that she is in the hot spot, the best spot to be in if you're a focal point, which is right, not exactly in the center, but a little off center. So if you have a head here, a head here, a head here, or a head here, if you have perfect middle and uh, vertical and horizontal lines uh, perpendicular towards this exact center of the canvas, these are the best spots to have your, your character in. Something in the middle right here is so boring, so lame. Sometimes it's nice if, if, if the story requires it, if it's a close-up shot. 
aerial view, the character's looking up at a shocking scene, he's just seen the final transformation of some enemy, and it's just a really, really close-up shot. That's, I understand why you're perfectly centering a character if they're looking up, or it's a close-up for an emotional scene. Um, but, uh, but you know, if, if it is an establishing shot, a character splash just like this, um, you do need to avoid that perfect symmetry. And that perfect symmetry is something that uh, working with a tile canvas tricks you into doing because you don't have as much space on a tile canvas as you do a vertical canvas. So let's go back to the vertical canvas here. Um, if this was a perfect tile canvas, which means a square, perfect square canvas, you don't have as much breathing room as you think you do. So the head would either be here, 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 or here with all of these areas perfectly empty. But when you have a perfect center and you place the head somewhere here, you see how the other focal point is on the other side. So you have this beautiful kind of almost symmetrical but not really displacement of the focal points. Nothing really feels empty. And if this is empty, which it is, and this is empty, it's a space empty. It's a healthy amount of breathing room. It's not so much empty feeling. Um, in a tile canvas, you tend to occupy one part of the tile for the most part, or it ends up being a perfect kind of, um, like that's what I, why I say tile. It just looks like some sort of graphic uh, design or some kind of uh, repetitive pattern. Tiles are great for repetitive patterns, for something a little bit more font-based or, or uh, calligraphic or something like that. Um, so a tall uh, canvas in, invites the eyes to look down, up and down at the character instead of being constricted in a small little space where the focal point, no matter where it goes, seems too deliberate and the other side will feel empty. But it's much better and much easier for a canvas uh, that is long for us to have a diagonal line of sight. But again, in a squared canvas, everything feels restricted. You either have one half or the other. Um, and that, that again, goes back to that uh, cramped, forceful symmetry that comes with a perfect square. So now that we've taken care of that, I'm going to work on the face. So the problem with the face, the perspective is completely off. What you're doing is you're showing so much of the far side that It doesn't feel like she's in three-quarter view, for real. Okay. So. so what we have to do when a character is in three-quarter view is track down their symmetry line. And symmetry line the way you drew it before it felt like it was perfectly in between the face it felt like we were having equal sides here and here the head wouldn't really do that and the chin wouldn't really be behind the neckline so the reference that Abu generated for us is showing that the neckline breaches or that the chin line breaches the neckline so this is the neckline and this is the chin outside of it also one half of the face is shorter or less wide than the other half. So see how much face we're getting between this center line of the nose. So imagine, let me just uh, carry this into Portrait Studio, I mean into a, not a PNG. Really? You want to play this game today? All right. I chose the wrong girl to play this game with Windows. <clears throat> so we have a symmetry line right here, which is typically what you were missing. This is a symmetry line that travels all the way across. Okay. And then we've got the measurement of this entire side between this line and the end point, and this line and this end point, which is, in essence, this line. So this line that we're seeing, see that? We're just getting another side view face. See that? Eureka moment. All right, so this line right here is the line we're seeing on the contour. This is a contour line that gets revealed when the face rotates because that's the hills and valleys being revealed that we couldn't see because we were head on. 
So as soon as we rotate the head, we start seeing all these C shapes. C, C, inner C, outer C, because we're starting to reveal the uh, altitudes. So here and here, there should be just way more space between this line and this symmetry line and this line. Um, that's it, that's the symmetry line and the far side. So what you didn't do is that you didn't have, you had pretty equal distance between this edge and this edge and this line and this symmetry line and the far side. So what I'm trying to do is close that. Another thing you didn't do is compress the eye. The eye should be more compressed. I feel like you're really good at drawing a face. You don't have all your rotation down. A lot of the form behind rotating a face in three-quarter view kind of escapes you. I mean, look at the lips. They have no C shapes on them. It's three-quarter view, but we're seeing so much of the far corner. Right, you're trying to force us to see the nostril, even though the nostril should typically actually be tucked in because look at where this nostril ends and this one was all the way down here. So we're seeing a lot of really flattened out anatomy in your rotation. Right? So before, after. And then I'm just going to reposition the face. I think there's too much face, but we'll see. So I'm going to get the eraser and correct that. And by the way, I found out what it was that was making my mouse, my, my pen jump across the screen. I, uh, I had my Note 8, Note 9 charger, sorry, the wireless charger and the Note 9, which has a pen that has Wacom capabilities right beside my tablet. And I guess it was registering somehow because it was skipping my brush all the way across the canvas. Uh, all the way across the screen. So if you do have a wireless charger nearby or if you have a pen tool on your phone, your tablet might pick it up. Not until I disconnected my, because uh, I was troubleshooting like crazy, not until I disconnected my wireless charger did it start working again. So I'm raising the face and now we have to take care of that chin problem. Very, very big problem. So. off my game today. I'm so sorry. I don't, I mean, just general drop in performance altogether. I've been uh, trying to find the meaning of life lately. <laughs> so filter, liquefy. Um, so just like in the reference, I'm picking up here. So I'm trying to bring the chin in front of. The neckline, okay? If the neckline stays thick, she will look very masculine. I'm also going to start tucking in the far side of the face and then we'll talk about light finally. So if you were to be, if you were to try to develop a hierarchy of priority Prioritizing, prioritizing different fundamentals to focus on. Perspective, I know light is a big deal and light is the king of your drawing, um, but perspective is a really big deal in that you can deal with the perspective and the form and the rotation before you even lay down your first value. So if you can sketch some stuff out, it'll really help you. I just want you guys to take a look at the before and after before I touch the light, you will really see a big, big difference in what the head was doing in this scene. So hopefully I can go back. I was doing a critique. I forgot to put the history stats on a thousand and I lost all the work. It was horrible. It was horrible. Um, so let me she. Okay. So before after. Do you see that rotation? Um, oopsie, I forgot to reposition her. All right, chill out. Okay, do you guys see that? 
I'll zoom in, I'll zoom in. Before, after. So it's moving down when I do the after. So this thing is at this thing. It's too big. Right, before, after. For the before and after to really work, the before has to be perfectly lined up. So it moves up now. All right, there we go. Before you see that scrunched in neck and she's kind of like forcing her face to the side. There's no perspective on the lips. The far nostril droops a little bit. The eyes are not really focused. And after we actually rotated her head in space. You can do even more. You can grab like this entire half and push it away. But at that point, some faces are that wide. Do you understand? Um, some faces are that wide. So when you guys aren't picking up perspective stuff like this, no matter how well, I don't care how well you draw the eyes and how pretty you make them look and you bring in those really, really cool, you know, styles in, those um, Chinese styles that Chinese artists have. I mean, you're doing all the little pretty tricks here and there. You got the blue sparklies. Any painting with blue, blue sparklies gets instant fan points. You can, you can put blue sparklies till the, till the sun goes down, but it, it's not going to help you if you have fundamentals like perspective falling apart. Okay, so remember that one analogy I described to you. An illustration has, you know, whatever fundamentals it needs to keep the paper up. Your paper is here and the illustrations are the pillars that keep it, and, and the fundamentals are the pillars that keep the illustration up. If you have really, really good anatomy and you've got great colors it's not enough you will still have a flop painting is not going to be supported into a building this is the most ridiculous analogy <laughs> but and even if you had a third one you would still have a flop you have to have all the fundamentals intact to pull off the illustration sometimes you don't need perspective in an illustration uh, so you know it, it, just whatever you might need are what the pillars represent. There is no set of fundamentals for this specific analogy. Sometimes you don't need perspective. Sometimes you're dealing with a very basic portrait. Um, sometimes you do need light on form. Usually always light on form is the most important one. Uh, you could argue there is a middle fundamental right in the center, <laughs> keeping everything together and afloat. This this is a never-ending metaphor. Um, but, uh, but if you have one like perspective falling off, there will always be that weirdness in your drawing that your fans report to you. Something feels off, something feels stiff. I'm not sure what it is, can't put my finger on it, but something is off. That's typically the fact that one fundamental is falling apart. And when you put it together, look at that difference. Just a little bit of perspective and some referencing. Okay, uh, so this reference is off of Portrait Studio. Um, if anyone's interested. Now we're doing the light. All right, so the light was a bit of a problem because you're typically um, in a dark room. If the brightness like this comes up, this kind, this guy kind of becomes, acts like a, a universal just in its area localized. So yes, there's the universal light revealing her face, which is what you've used here, but I don't think you're representing this as a light. What's the condition for something that is a light in a painting? What do we have to do to things that are a light? Can anyone answer that question? So I didn't organize my tools yet, so I have no idea where dodge tool is. For the love of God, I'll just use the brush on color dodge. Understand? Okay, so I'm just raising this up, and this is the answer. <laughs> All right, when you do this, it it's just what you got to do. I know that it feels like it's interrupting the focal point, but it is part of the focal point as we drew earlier. So I'm grabbing that value, and I'm just introducing it to the sides of the head, as Portrait Studio is telling me, and on the nose. The nose is much more shiny, much more susceptible to reflection because it's very oily. Saturate the light? No, the condition for lights in an environment, in any painting, is that they are really white. They hit really high. Look at that. Look at where that light sits. That's the only way a light will read as a light. Right here on the in inner part of the eye. And then I'll just go back and erase the way as I need to.
So, um, I've been having a really, really rough summer, and, um, I don't know, I've just been a little bit distracted, so to explain my, uh, absence last Thursday, um, I went out to get a dog, which I had to return, which is horrible, uh, so that's kind of why I've, uh, I've, I've just been incapable of kind of joining in on conversations on Discord or doing any more after hour streams. I've just been at wit's end. So I'm, I'm hoping that things change. My dream was just to see my little my little puppy kind of snoring under a Christmas tree. It was a stupid, silly little dream I had. But our landlord here doesn't allow us to have dogs, so it was just really rough returning him. Now a family friend saw my Facebook post about it and they want the puppy and it's just and they have the perfect house, and they have the perfect everything for him. And I want him to be happy and put his well wishes, you know, put his uh, his interest, in it, have good wishes for his interest or whatever the hell. Um, but that's just my puppy. And anyway, I'm sorry about my absence last Thursday. That's typically what I was going through. And showing up, and there's nobody who handed in any homework. <laughs> Okay, so you see how I didn't outline the lips? It's the fact that the lips pout forward naturally like a snout that they're catching the light. You see that? That's what I'm doing here, and I'm, and I'm kind of unifying that together. Do you see that? Careful not to let this little wrinkle there, because that's going to look like she's old. So it's a little touch just like that. I hope by Christmas time I have found a new place. Uh, buying a house is difficult for a Canadian in the U.S. because it's a whole credit transfer thing. Um, and I'm not really a U.S. citizen, so it's really weird and long-winded and complicated, and I do wish I could buy a house. One of my dreams is to create, like, an Xavier school for gifted youngsters, but for artists. And I actually, you know, like, work up a grant and do a contest and offer... Um, housing and uh, tutoring for a student who's struggling who doesn't really have all that support from their family. So that's something that I have in the works um, for the future. I have to buy a house though in order to do that. I want to buy like a big ass mansion. I do not have the money for a big ass mansion, um, nor will I ever. But I just wish with all my heart that I can do that and just uh, shelter some people the way I never got shelter when I was a kid. But yeah. A lot of stuff is coming out, and the winter, the the the, the uh, summer really brought out a lot of my dreams in my mind. I'm gonna borrow some of this color and use it directly on the face, and then just get that color and throw it everywhere. So we're trying to get rid of some of that peachy, universal skin tone that's just not working. Another thing that you forgot is. The light right here. This is a very big deal. This is the light of the whatever this is stuff. Color dodge. <clears throat> is it a beautiful dream? <laughs> Oops. Oh my gosh, I erased away at the layer. Okay, so you see how we're going back and forth between the way that objects reveals the nature of the light source and where the light source reveals the object. And again, we're just comparing before. Do you see that stiffness just kind of like tucks her head in? After her head is more relaxed, more rotated naturally. And if you want her looking back at the audience, it's a very easy shift in the eyeballs. Why did you have to stiffen the whole head for her to look at the audience instead of just moving the eyeballs? That's why the eyeballs are there. That's why there's spheres in their joints and they can look where we need to look. I think her eyes are a little bit dark, especially considering that they are whites. So take it easy with that stylized darkness in the eyes. You're just showing me bloodshot eyes. It's really not working. And though it may seem charming to you, um, it's actually taking away from the likability of the character. We also don't know where she's looking. So I'm going to borrow some basic universal light here. 
just so her eyes are a little bit more accessible to the audience. And I have no idea where my sharpen tool is, so I'm just going to forget that. Alright, so I need to take it easy with the reflection here of the uh, staff, but I'm still going to keep behind a lot of the pattern. Remember that the, the eye is just a mirror, it's reflecting a mirror image. So some of the areas here that you don't have that really don't make sense are there's no subsurface scattering on the hair here. None of this hair is reflecting a proximity to the light. That needs to be changed. You're using a single width, a single pixel width brush here in some areas which you don't really need to be doing. Without this single brush that you've used on everything without it if we omitted it theoretically if we just omitted it you would have nothing there to represent hair so in order for us to believe there is hair there you have to paint the body of the hair in there and you'll have to paint with the color of the light source in certain areas all right so we need to see some I'm gonna use the hair brush it's just one of my new brushes but I'm calling it the hair brush because it is so fucking awesome Right? <laughs> I'm really proud of my latest brush. Um, so I'm just going to use it. Okay. It's not actually a hairbrush because hairbrushes are typically just scatter brushes used uh, with a pen pressure. This is hard to figure out because it's already so rendered hairbrush that I'm talking about, mine, is for really, really early blocking in for the hair. I'm just looking at the navigator here, trying to break apart the hair in whatever sections I can figure out. Um, gotta go back to soft brush on color dodge mode. All of this hair here is going to get some of that rim light because there needs to be something that kind of creates a distinction between her and the background. This side, I would start with the rim light on this side since we actually do have a light behind her head here. Traveling all the way down and kind of revealing her silhouette in the back. And then just a little bit on the sides. Okay. And again, some of the curls here that are kind of peeking through the shadow are, can get a little bit of light. Some of the little pieces here. So your, your, your hair isn't treated as a body. You're kind of treating it as like this optional thing. Your, the hair that you're drawing isn't really making a lot of sense. So, and you're depending a lot on that thin brush. Then we've got that chest area. Fortress Studio is telling us that the inside here is lit up and remember it's both a light up of the value and the color of the light source are transferring both units over make sure to preserve your edges I, I don't know how much longer I'm gonna last before my final public session and I feel like I'm getting close to it I always said that I'll, I'll stop my public sessions either for maternity leave and so I'm coming back to it or I die <clears throat> but my back problem I think is is starting to take make a lot of choices for me and uh, it's getting really frustrating let's talk about the the region so because this light is really strong in this area what it's done it's caused a monochromatic effect on any of the colors nearby it so yes, she has a red shirt, but all of this area, the vicinity in this area, including the staff, gets that monochromatic effect. And I'm just using some of that monochromatic effect here on anything in proximity to this major light source. And you see how close it is to her face? It's a shared focal point. And you can go back and clean it up so it's not just a big blob of uh, blue, you can have a little bit more of the inner workings and mechanism here, a little bit more kind of accented. You can do a little thing like that. 
Um, there has to be a way for you to lead this focal point back to her eyes. You can make her eyes just as saturated. You can dim it so that it's just bright only on the inner grills, not towards the top. So you can dim it in such a way like that. That's one way you can dim it so you're not overwhelming the piece with one big blue light because the scale, the size of, this, of the light in the staff is the problem. Not so much that light has to be white. Before, she's kind of like <laughs> <laughs> And after, a little bit more lively, a little bit more present. And you see what I mean by the, by the hair flicking out, catching the light? Just like that. I'm doing this with a small brush because I need to get this done. You need to start studying how to paint hair uh, because you're depending way too much on the tiny little brush strokes to make the hair work for you. Another thing that you could have done is reveal a little bit more of the arm. There's nothing really happening with the arm. You could have had a hand in this area, kind of like uh, holding the staff a little um, like that. And the arm is kind of doing this. So you can show a, little, show a little bit more arm. You could have shown a little bit more arm. Uh, the other arm could have been um, I don't know, kind of like thinking. <laughs> maybe she could have been thinking. She's like, hmm, maybe I should have gotten tampons. <laughs> um, hmm, I'm not, it's not that girls only think about that stuff, but it kind of looks cute when she's kind of got her hand up there thinking about whatever it is girls think about. Hmm. <laughs> Which beauty guru am I subscribing to next on YouTube? <laughs> nah, girls think about better stuff than that. Okay, so a little bit of a position here. We'll create this beautiful little triangle so that the focal point is shared between these two units, uh, these three units, and then the hand right there doing, doing hand things to the staff. And then the space up here, the breathing room, breathing room, breathing room. I think it looks great uh, with these additions. Okay, any questions at all? You no hair can. <laughs> um, depends on the light environment. Um, so does anyone have any questions? Behave line dependency. There's a viewer who calls himself line dependency on the chat. Of course. <clears throat> any questions at all? Um, it's definitely line dependency in the hair. <clears throat> uh, so let's move on to our next piece. Uh, this piece is more of a color correction piece that I wanted to take a look at. So you're telling me that there's this big fairy goddess and she is just chilling like a villain, but everybody else is kind of small and in the way. What you want to do is if you want to make her look big, you really got to fill, fill the whole canvas up with her. And you got to make her look like this is her realm. So make the light set up in such a, such a way where it feels like she's laying down. It's kind of nighttime for her. So I'm setting up the light environment to reinforce her situation, her life. All right. I'm also dimming the amount of pink on her face, kind of creating like this gradient between purple to pink, which is her face area. And then what I'm going to do is just save the most pink areas for the mouth, for the blush. You really shouldn't be. Look at that. Just that transition alone has re-centralized kind of the focal point. But she isn't the focal point. Beware. The focal point is these characters here in the foreground. So what, I'm got, what I have to do is show you guys that this is the little area we're supposed to be looking at and in that area the head is what we're supposed to be looking at and then that the little glowy area that we're supposed to be looking at and she needs this dark kind of framework because she's just this larger than life girl or goddess or something she's just chilling watching over them while they're visiting her so I would want to blanket her in the realm that she, the storyline that she's under, which is she's asleep. 
and I will delete at the areas in her that are closest to the focal point. So you are actually confusing the focal point with this piece. Right? And I'm just thinking about dark spots and light spots, not trying to overwhelm the focal point here. Um, another color correction issue is the foreground and the greens. These are daytime greens, not nighttime greens. Okay, so these are the issues and the reason why I had to add that gradient towards the top is because she's at the edge of the canvas. So you can place a potential th uh, focal point at the edge of the canvas, but you just have to be careful not to allow it to take over. Now what I'm doing is I'm grabbing this and anywhere on her that she is maybe nearby, this glowing little orb dude and his girlfriend. I'm using the exact color that's coming off of them on her. And though she might be under a, a, a universal of some kind, try to unify. And if they have this moonlight power to them, if they're pe creatures of the moon, or I'm not sure how you're writing this, um, which is why writing is so important, you can share the universal value color that's visible on her face with the values you're using for them. So now that we've done that, really you don't have anything else going on other than this big girl. And you could reorganize it so that she's the focal point. There are so many ways to fix this piece. I think this is another fairy here. Maybe not as significant as these guys. And what I would do is just color correct one more time. What I would do with her is I would bring her head down like she's kind of tucking her head into oops, her arms. A little bit lower like that. Okay, so she's still sleeping, her shoulders are still up there, but she's closer to them. And so we don't have to worry about her being so far up in the canvas. But she's still not the focal point. Okay, so nice and out of the way, what you have to do is remember that this curve is now her body. I don't know what you meant by putting a mountainside that was the exact area where her body's curve should have been, but... Alright, and then now, if you have Dodge Tool, um, you can start working around you know, what's being shared, where the blues are coming from. I would put blues on... I would use Dodge Tool and all the highlights and use this blue, this kind of shading blue, and all the pockets around here. Right, so anywhere where there's a pocket of shadow is where I would place in some blue. Okay, so the atmosphere is so much much more um, sharp now. It kind of make it's kind of making a lot of sense, and we have because the colors have unified it as well as the light source, and we have a little cast shadow coming off her arm from the light source these are casting. So you, you need to go in there and fix these edges. I won't be able to go through through them all. And you're kind of trying to tell me that these things are in the foreground. And these guys are super bright dudes, so they have like their own little right light area here. So anything in the foreground should just be dark, should just be black. So it's hard to tell if these are in the foreground, but if they were like black shapes, then we might have been able to be convinced that they were in the foreground. And they're not just black, black. They're this shape, maybe a bit bigger. Okay. So, let's look at the before and after. I would add a, like a slight bluish tint to these dudes here, like a teal or something like that. Something with some green in it. See how pretty that is? Kind of like a moonlit yellow. But, but there's green in there, which is the yellow. So before, kind of showing too much sky. 
it's not really an intimate scene between the two. She's way too pink. And like I said, you can bring the pinks back wherever you feel like she, they're needed. You can tint, give her a pink that is closer to purple, where yours was closer to reds and had a lot of peaches in it, which is not possible unless she was glowing. And if she was glowing, that's a whole other kind of illustration. So you can bring her pink back just like that. And it's a friendlier pink and work in patches, you know, don't just make everything pink. Some areas are more purple and some are not. And then finally there's that last little really pretty glow of these dudes. That just finishes it off. Look at that. Two little fairies come to talk to Mama Fairy while she's sleeping. Okay? So that's about color balance and focal point. Uh, she shouldn't be the focal point. If it's going to be a dark scene and you have glowing fairies, please remember you've already decided the fairies are going to be the focal point. Little tiny lights floating around are a focal point because they're just begging to be looked at. All right, where do you look? Even if it's the darkest night, a little firefly seems to shine and light up like fireworks because the, 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 the night is so dark. Um, so that's the exact same thing here. Is that the scene is so dark, having those tiny little fairies, you might as well just give in and make it a focal point. Okay, any questions at all? I, I would love to see some kind of like environmental effect that these little dudes are, are uh, causing. So maybe a little walkway of where they were. Do you see that? And that's the stairs, the light, their light is shining some rim light on nearby stuff from their light um, will all help to complete the image. And as you saw from the before and after we did here, the light that I'm doing on her, I'm sharing values back and forth. So light gives off its magnitude as well as its, co as well as its color. Write that back to me without the stutter. <laughs> um, watch, you guys are going to add the stutter. <laughs> uh, so... Yeah, so uh, please make sure that the light is a back and forth relationship between the object. It's not object has colors and lights by itself, and then light source does its own thing, and then object number three has its own middle ground, background, foreground, and you might as well just put a different frame around every object in the painting if you're not going to allow them to be unified by a color and a light. The way you unify objects in a painting and they all look really cool existing together in a canvas is by sharing the conditions of light between them. So the light threw off its color on the chest, on the arms, on the hair, on the face. This light emanated and was cast on her arm, on her face. So that's how you complete the image. Also one little thing that you have a problem with here is that you also have a bit, look at your canvas isn't long enough. Um, a longer canvas like that adds, gives the story a little bit more cinematic uh, foundation. So that's it for today. Thank you everyone for watching. Again, I do apologize for my distractedness lately. Um, I've, I've just been struggling with a lot of stuff and it's, I wish it was stuff that you guys can help with, but I'm pretty much by myself dealing with them. It's hard to, um, I mean, I'm very thankful for Abu, Abu's support. Uh, but uh, I hope somewhere in the future they uh, build a new way to have surgery on the thoracic um, spinal column area. Um, I hope that somewhere in the, we can only hope that medicine advances and so that I can finally get the surgery I need to relieve me from all this unnecessary pain born of unjust, uh, injustice in general. Um, so that I can focus on what it is that I love doing, which is art and teaching. Sitting down on the chair is excruciating. Leaning forward with my arms on the desk art is excruciating. Running, walking, sitting, sleeping is excruciating. I don't get sleep anymore. And I've been going through some stress outside of medical issues. And it's so hard to believe that there's going to be a dawn at the end of this hellhole that it has been my summer. Um... I'm trying to stay afloat for you guys. I, I really want to be available for you guys. I don't want to be that YouTuber, and I never really did this, or I stopped doing it. I, I don't want to be that YouTuber that disappears for five months and just with no with no mention. I, I've built too tight-knit a community to do that to you guys. 
but I'm just letting you guys know that I, I feel like I'm losing this fight. <clears throat> I don't want to lose it, uh, but I feel like I'm losing this fight. Um, thank you everyone for watching. If you guys want to uh, read up on the two challenges available right now, I don't have details on the creepy creature yet. I will put that up soon, as soon as I find some time. Um, because I'm trying to wrap my mind around finalizing the book for you guys, which is another massive project uh, that I have to coordinate, and I'm the main talent behind it, whereas Portrait Studio Abu is the main talent. I'm just coordinating some of the choices for the Mac release of Portrait Studio and the, and the updates. The book is entirely my responsibility, which is a lot of work, so I'm trying my best to manage my time and have the book out before Christmas this year. Uh, I think I've delayed it a bit too too long. Uh, so please go to the community. Go to istabrak.com and click on the Google Plus community to get to this page. Please read on the brief for the, up, the, the current community challenge, the one that's running, the environment uh, character integration. You're reflecting the environment in the character, and the character is a reflection of the environment. Uh, this is going to be a very, very abstract kind of theme to cover, but it is a, it's a beautiful thing to dress up your portfolio with. Um, because it is more environment than character, both very, very strong character elements, though, such as gesture. Um, so uh, you have that, and then the creepy creature challenge, which is pretty self-explanatory, but I covered that today. The sale is October 1st, almost 50% off on Portrait Studio, if you guys can wait. For those who have been dying to get it, um, for those who don't want to wait, uh, you can still get it for a 10%, just because it's the spirit of, of the sale, and <clears throat> for those who want to get it, but just don't want to be bothered to wait three weeks or four weeks, um, uh, which I've been announcing this for such a long time. Um, so thank you to everyone who has supported. Uh, thank you to all my patrons. Thank you guys. You're all so sweet. I'm going to read through all your comments as soon as I close the shop. Uh, bye, everyone. I'll see you on Thursday. Hopefully, nothing's in the way between me and Thursday. Um, uh, we'll see. Thank you, everyone. Bye.